At the age of 23, Eric sets off to study horticulture and organic farming for a college exchange program in Pahoa Village, Hawaii. I had never been this far from home. But I was excited for him. I, I've always wanted my kids to, to just do what they love. On the organic farm, Eric works the land in exchange for his room and board. I did a variety of things on the farm, mulching around the trees, wheelbarrowing dirt, doing odd jobs in a greenhouse with plants. But after just one week working on the farm, there's trouble in paradise. I was lifting a wheelbarrow, and it was a lot more difficult than previously. It was really strange. I did feel vulnerable and weak, but I just figured I should tough it out, and I will be fine later. But the next night, his attempt to tough out his fatigue backfires. My nerves were on fire. My roommates were walking on the floor in my cabin, and I felt the vibrations from the floor to my bed, to me, and felt it as absolutely horrible pain. The next morning, Eric goes to the ER at Hilo Medical Center. They took urine samples and blood samples, and the doctors thought that it was bacteria related, and they gave me an antibiotic to see if that would help, but I didn't think this little tiny pill would help with this big problem that I had. And that was discouraging because I was in so much pain. Eric returns to the farm to rest, but after two days on antibiotics, something startles him from his slumber. I had woken up in the middle of the night and had the urge to go to the bathroom really bad. Having to get up was really like a mind game because you knew that getting up was gonna be awful before you even got up. But I had to do this because I had to go to the bathroom really bad. So I got up, I walked outside, and tried to go, and I was really upset then because I couldn't go to the bathroom. It was just so frustrating and scary at the same time. The next morning, Eric returns to the hospital. I told them my pain was 9.5 out of 10, and that's when they started taking it more seriously. Doctors set him up in an ER room, and six hours later, Eric tries to get out of bed. I could barely move or stand. The hypersensitivity of the nerves affected pretty much every part of my body. That was absolutely awful. Doctors formally admit Eric into the hospital and give him morphine. They also perform a spinal tap. My spinal tap results showed that I had a septic meningitis. Meningitis is a dangerous swelling of the brain that is sometimes fatal. Aseptic meningitis is typically brought on by a virus. It was absolutely scary because now it's getting serious. So doctors administer a steroid to keep Eric's meningitis at bay. I was texting my parents that I was in the hospital. I was home and Eric texts that he was in the hospital, and he didn't give a lot of detail. I was really tired, and I was really in pain, so much so that it, it hurt to text. His last text to me was, stop, it's too exhausting. I thought, how can it be so hard for you to text me? And um, I knew he was in trouble. So Linda heads for the airport. I was afraid I wouldn't get there in time. This was not Eric who I just dropped off at the airport a few weeks earlier. He was in a lot of pain, and so I didn't rush up to hug him. I tapped him on the feet. He'd just wince, and tears would roll down the sides of his cheeks. It was really good to see my mom. Having your mom there when you need her the most is the best thing. <sighs> now I'm really crying. 
Despite numerous medications, Eric remains debilitated for two weeks. Then, doctors prescribe a course of physical therapy. When Eric stood up in physical therapy, I was floored. It looked to me like he had lost at least 40 pounds of muscle. I really didn't believe that it was my own body. My arms were stick thin. My legs were unbelievably skinny, too. I couldn't get out of bed myself. I couldn't stand with a walker without two grown men by my side. He turned to me, and he asked, when is this going to get better, Mom? What if it doesn't? How can your mom answer that? If you were in that pain forever, life, life isn't worth living. For two weeks, the medical team performs an array of diagnostic tests to no avail. But Dr. John Martell refuses to give up. We needed to do the fourth spinal tap to really figure out what was going on. And the results are gruesome. I got the lab results. I don't swear, but mentally, I went, oh, shit. The results of Eric's fourth spinal tap were not only shocking, they were scary. I knew we were facing serious trouble. Dr. Mattel just looked me straight in the eye and said, do you want to know the worst case scenario? And I said, yes. I had to tell her that Eric could go into coma and might even die. I did think, I'm going to be bringing him home. I just hope I'm not bringing him home in a coffin. The spinal tap revealed a high level of eosinophils. Eosinophils are specialized white blood cells that fight a particular type of infection. When you see that, it's clear you're dealing with a parasitic infection. We now knew for sure that we were dealing with an infection due to Angiostrongylus cantonensis. More commonly known as rat lungworm, this parasitic roundworm can cause serious neurologic dysfunction. In severe cases, it's fatal. Inside Eric's brain, the parasites attack the neural tissue, causing the inflammation and Eric's meningitis. The parasitic larvae swim through the cerebral spinal fluid into the spinal cord, where they attach to nerves and feed on fluid, causing Eric's hypersensitivity, debilitation, and bladder dysfunction. This could kill my son. And I just prayed to God that that would not happen. This parasite brought me to my knees. I was worried about Eric's situation and the real possibility that he could die. But I wasn't going to let that happen. Dr. Martell floods Eric's system with a strong antiparasitic medication called albendazole. And seven days later, Eric turns a corner. My pain started going away, and then I finally cracked a smile for once. And I let my mom take a picture with me. That was a great picture. <laughs> that was a great feeling to send something like that out to the people who wondered how Eric was doing from where he was at. It's huge. I want to say that <sighs> this wouldn't have killed me, but I, I think that her being there gave me a strength. But how did Eric contract this deadly rat lungworm? The rat lungworm parasite typically cycles between rats and infected snails or slugs. But humans can also become unwitting hosts. Infection can occur when a person eats improperly washed produce that's contaminated with slime from an infected snail or slug.